благодарить президента Барака Обаму за прекрасную кооперацию в этой сфере. Спасибо. Christy Parsons with the Chicago Tribune. Thank you for taking my question, Mr. President. How will the two sides get around your differences on missile defense to work out a follow-on treaty, since that seems to be the biggest impediment to further arsenal reductions? And can the two sides resolve this issue? Can the two sides resolve this issue by working out a cooperative agreement on missile defense? Thank you. You know, one of the things that uh, we discussed when we first met in Moscow uh, was the relationship between. Uh, offensive uh, and defensive capabilities. And what I made clear was that our missile defense systems were not directed at changing the strategic balance between the United States and Russia, but were instead directed at protecting the American people from uh, potentially new attacks uh, from missiles launched from third countries. We recognize, however, that Russia has a significant interest in this issue. And what we've committed to doing is to engaging in a significant discussion, not only bilaterally, but also uh, having discussions with our European allies and others about a framework in which we can potentially cooperate on issues of missile defense uh, in a way that preserves U.S. national security interests, preserves Russia's national security interests, and allows us uh, to guard against uh, a rogue missile from any source. Uh, so I'm actually optimistic that having completed this treaty, which signals our strong commitment to a reduction in overall nuclear weapons, uh, and that I believe is going to strengthen the nuclear non-proliferation treaty regime that sends a signal around the world that the United States and Russia are prepared to once again take leadership in moving in the direction of reducing uh, reliance on nuclear weapons and pre preventing the spread of nuclear weapons as well as uh, nuclear materials. Uh, that we will have built the kind of trust, not only between presidents, but also between governments and between peoples, uh, that allows us to move forward uh, in a constructive way. I've, I've re repeatedly said that uh, we will not do anything that endangers or limits my ability as Commander-in-Chief to protect the American people. Uh, and we think that missile defense can be an important component of that. But we also want to make clear that uh, the approach that we've taken in no way is intended to change the strategic balance between the United States and Russia. Uh, and I'm actually confident that moving forward, as we have these discussions, uh, it will be part of a broader set of discussions about, for example, how we can uh, take tactical nuclear weapons out of theater, the possibilities of us uh, making more significant cuts, not only in deployed, but also non-deployed uh, missiles. There are a whole range of issues uh, that I think that we can uh, make significant progress on. Uh, I'm confident that this is an important first step in that direction. I would like to say a few words on the issue. Doubtless, in interrelation between uh, missile defense and start was one of the m one of the most difficult topics to discuss. No one tries to reject it, but at present the language that 
has been in the treaty we signed satisfies both parties and we proceed from the fact that on that basis we will implement the newly signed treaty. Uh, we, it, it matters to us what will happen to the uh, anti-missile defense. It is related to the configuration of our potential and our capacities, and we will watch how these processes develop. And the preamble has a language that to a certain extent replicates a legal principle of the unchangeability of circumstances that uh, the uh, basis process. for the treaty, and but it's a flexible process, in and we are interested in close cooperation uh, over it with our American partners. We have appreciated the steps by the current U.S. administration in terms of the decision in the area of uh, anti-missile defense of the previous administration, and this has led to progress. It doesn't mean that we have no digressions in understanding, but it means that we have will and wish to address these issues. We offered it to the United States that we have uh, them establish the global anti-missile defense system. And we should think about this given the uh, vulnerability of our world, the terror, terrorist challenges and the possibility of using nuclear arms by terrorists existing in this world. And I am an optimist as well as my American colleague, and I believe that we will be able to reach compromise on these issues. Vladimir Solyov, Commerçant. Uh, I have two questions to each of the presidents. One. Moscow and Washington. The first is Mr. Obama. Moscow and Washington not the first time agree on a reduction of strategic offensive arms. But as you have mentioned, Russia and the United States are not the only countries having nuclear weapons. So how specifically can the documents achieved well, similar to the today's document on limitation of nuclear arms, how, well, um, how soon we will see others sign uh, um, this document? And will you move along this track to, uh, together with Russia? And uh, do you feel the uh, of Russian Federation? The same as the Russian Federation. You have mentioned the fact that sometimes there is an impression that Moscow and Washington are unable to agree on anything else but uh, mutual reduction of arms. So do we See any counter, counter, any things that will counter such a statement, and what will the agreements be? Well, first of all, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, the United States and Russia account for 90 percent of the world's nuclear weapons, and given this legacy of the Cold War. It is critical for us to show significant leadership. Uh, that, I think, is what we've begun to do with this follow-on START Treaty. Other countries are going to have to be making a series of decisions about how they approach uh, the issue of their nuclear weapon stockpiles. Uh, and uh, as I've repeatedly said, and I'm sure Dmitry feels the same way with respect to his country, uh, we are going to preserve our nuclear deterrent so long as other countries have nuclear weapons, and we are going to make sure that that stockpile is safe and secure and effective. But I do believe that as uh, we look out into the 21st century, that more and more countries will come to recognize that the most important factors in providing security, uh, and peace to their citizens uh, will depend on their economic growth, will depend on the capacity of the international community to resolve conflicts. Uh, it will depend on having a strong uh, conventional military that can protect uh, a nation's borders, uh, and that nuclear weapons uh, increasingly in an interdependent world uh, will make less and less sense as 
the cornerstone of security policy. But that's going to take some time, and I think each country is going to have to make its own determinations. The key is for the United States and Russia uh, to show leadership on this front because we are so far ahead of every nation uh, with respect to uh, possession of nuclear weapons. The, the primary concerns that we identified in a recent nuclear posture review, uh, essentially a, a declaratory statement uh, of U.S. policy with respect to nuclear weapons, uh, said that our biggest concerns right now are actually the issues of nuclear terrorism and nuclear proliferation. More countries obtaining nuclear weapons, those weapons being uh, less controllable, less secure, nuclear materials floating uh, around the globe.